have a smile on my face and keep on pushing forward. And of course, one day I shall defeat the villain, which is Inktober. Hey Magical Beads, Adelina here, and welcome to Inktober Day 7! I have a lot planned for today, so off we go on today's magical adventure! Hey Magical Beads, Adelina here, and welcome to Inktober Day 7. This is me showing you my lovely pumpkin. My goal this Halloween is to dress up as Greg from Over the Garden Wall. So I got this pumpkin from Hobby Lobby because I thought it was about the right shape of Greg's teapot. So I even got this blue painter's tape from Walmart. I entrapped the pumpkin in blue painter's tape, hoping to create a nice rounded base. Because if you look at the pumpkin, and if you know <laughs> the pumpkin from seeing it every fall or just every so often in the fall season at the grocery store, you'll know pumpkins have little bumps and bruises here and there. And they have little indents, as you can see, as they curve all the way around. So I wanted to make it nice, rounded, and smooth. At least that was my end goal, to at least create the base for today. Of course, this is me showing you, Magical Babes, what it was looking like in the very beginning as I started to entrap it more so. The stem of the pumpkin fell off because I was using it to, well, hold the pumpkin as I put the tape all around. And this is me showing you, Magical Babes, that I still made use of that stem. I am not going to let it go to waste. I stuck it on the side to make it like, oh, this is actually the perfect shape for the little elephant trunk looking part of the teapot. So this is me. I stuck it on the side really quickly and I entrapped it with tape, as you can tell. And I was just very much enjoying this project. It was something new to me. I didn't know how to really go about like a cosplay prop. So this is my very first attempt. Hopefully it comes out well, and if not well, lesson learned, you learn from your failures. This is me going ahead and recycling my, well, <laughs> cardboard from my paper towel roll. I didn't want it to go to waste because when I saw it, I figured I can actually use this for the teapot. So I folded the, up the cardboard and trapped it with blue painters tape and I took a break. I was like, no more for today. I decided to watch this lovely Disney movie that reminded me of my childhood. And I just constantly watched it nonstop every year, every fall season, whenever it came out. Along with um, Halloween Town, Hocus Pocus. And I just, I just love the fall season. I think Can of Worms was one of them. I don't really like that and the worms kind of freaked me out. Anyway, back on topic. One of my struggles with as an artist is continuously drawing the same character over and over again. And the only difference I ever want to make sometimes is just the facial expressions. But when I try to draw a character, his body features repeatedly, I end up not doing so in the well correct way that I intend to. So this is me practicing that. I'm trying to practice me going and creating the same character multiple times, just changing out their facial expressions. And after I did so, I went ahead and colored it in. Of course, like I said in a previous vlog, I like to make my art vibrant, colorful, and loud because my art has a lot to say, just like me. And of course, Magical Babes, just wanting to tell you the prompt of the day was drip hence why i drew vampires i drew vampires since the prompt was drip because i was like oh a drip a, a drop of blood it's dripping from oh your draw when a vampire sucks blood but i was like let's make it a little bit more fun a little bit more kid friendly so i was like let's make it tomato juice I ended up drawing a big carton of tomato juice on the top right of the page. And the character that you see on the very top is just hissing away, hesitant of the tomato juice, saying, Vampires only drink blood. The second image that I tried to do with the same character was, No juice, only blood. And the final image of the same character that I tried to do is of them crying. I dropped the juice. In the end, they ended up wanting the juice. But they dropped it, and they didn't want to express how much they wanted it until they lost it. 
sadly, that's life. And as I was going, I was like, oh, I can make this a little bit more colorful, make it pop a little bit more. So I went ahead, colored the juice box, and added some blood dripping from the top of the page, dripping down all the way all across the whole scenes of all three images, kind of making the mesh away. At least that was my intention to do so. I was having a really good time with this because, again, I love vampires. My favorite books when I was growing up were Anne Rice novels. And, of course, Interview of a vamp- eh, Interview with a Vampire, Queen of the Damned. And, of course, I really liked Vampire Kisses, The Chronicles of Vladimir Todd. Like, I just loved vampire books. And, of course, I'm not going to lie, I did read Twilight. But... Other than vampire books, my only main books that I would ever read were poetry books. This is me. Sometimes you'll see random, like, rhymes here and there in my sketchbooks, and that's just random poems that pop up in my head. And you see one kind of a little bit on the bottom left on the page on the left next to the Sailor Moon Compact. So, yeah, that's just me being silly old me, as you could tell. Um, I was having a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the page, the last page, my mistake, the last page of Inktober Day 6 because it just looks so mystical to me. The door that you see me coloring in purple just reminded me of Coraline and I was like, ooh, a trap door leading to an alternate dimension. <laughs> anyway, if you magical babes are doing Inktober, please comment down below. How are you enjoying Inktober? What are your challenges? I would just love to hear from you. Don't be shy. Come on by. Comment down below. And, of course, until next time, Magical Babes, I'll see you on my next magical adventure. I hope you have an enchanting day. Until then, goodbye.